All right, so as usual, everything I show here, I will put on my Patreon. Actually, exception to that, this is in the Afterglow work file, and that's a paid product, so that won't be on Patreon, but the scan will, right? So basically, whenever I do like visual renders and stuff for my products, a lot of the time I use statue objects that are provided by no-3d.at or the Virtual Museums of Malapolska, I believe it was. The name always escapes me, but they're from Sketchfab. And there's various licensing on those, but I provide attribution wherever I can. But I always thought, you know, well, I wish I just had my own collection of statues. Thing is, I live in the UK, right? And we've got a lot of English heritage sites. And though I don't really have the money or time to be running around all of them and getting scans of every possible statue, when we went to Walmer Castle recently, there is a statue in one of the garden areas. This one here. I'm not sure if it's like Hermes or Pan or... I looked it up quickly. Apparently it's Mercury. The lighting, it was darker on this side. Obviously, I just walked around it quickly while my mum and brother were looking at me like, what, what are you doing? And I wanted to see what it would look like coming out after doing the AI masking and reality scan. If you haven't tried reality scan, it used to be called reality capture. It's owned by Epic Games. It's like a free photogrammetry tool, but it's a really high quality one. But they finally have an AI masking feature where if you put in a video image source, you tell it to like take a frame every like 0.1 seconds, it will automatically mask out the background from the subject. I say automatically, you do have to click on the AI masking feature. But in the end, the result of the statue was actually not that bad, right? Obviously it's not very clean. Like I said, I was just quickly like whoa walking around it but what i decided to do was for the areas where the scans weren't that good i am basically cutting them off so the way i'm doing that is if i'm in the edit mode like the vertex mode i am selecting on the carve section here it's on box carve by default which is fine but you can also use the polyline carve i go into orthographic i'm in wireframe and then i will basically like slice off the areas that i want or rather that i don't want so say i was in the orthographic mode i press one i was in the box carve and then I you know click to drag the box shape when you release it it should carve it but I right click to cancel it there if you're using the polyline it's a bit different so say for example I want to remove his head right because um obviously a bit weird I was down here like walking around in a circle when I was doing the scan so obviously you can't capture the face properly so all of the face data is captured from this perspective so obviously we're missing like perspective from above and around but I figure while a lot of the statue is usable the top is not so I'm not too fussed about the upper arm here although I might trim that off as well what I figure I'll do is like polyline a section maybe I'll decapitate him like this I'll press enter and we hope the blender won't crash give it some time to figure it out there we go and in this case the carve tool Oh, it has actually filled it in, yes. So that's one thing I do like about the carp tool is it doesn't leave just the hole. It does actually kind of close the gap. I can see that I've missed a piece here. So I'm actually just going to manually select that or select the vertex there, press L and then delete those vertices. So because it does fill the hole, it is taking like a kind of section of the UV map, I should say. So rather than it just being straight black, there is something there. So what I would like to do is I want to, over time, put together a little library of my own scans that I can use, again, for my own lighting demos and things, so I'm not relying on other people's, like, scan objects. And of course, as I do that, I can put together an asset library that we can make available to people. Thing is, though, this type of content, it's quite heavy, like, file size-wise, because of the number of vertices. But, you know, I think I'll keep it at a high vertex level. Because if we're doing 3D artwork, you know, I'm not that fussed about level of details. So let's shade that smooth as well. So thing is here, now we can like kind of recycle it for artwork of different kinds. The thing with humanoid statues is the, you know, oftentimes they're poses. So for example, like this one is very vertical. It's quite difficult to do something with, especially since we're kind of like missing parts of the body. But you're better off cropping off certain sections of the statue when trying to get like nice poses than just showing off like certain parts or areas of the body because in doing that you make it kind of more visually interesting and you'll notice as we go up and down it's kind of like the composition changes or of like the focal point in the frame changes depending on the shape of the statue so that's the only one i have for now but you know i just thought it was uh, an interesting little test and of course i'm in my afterglow uh, studio environment 7 here at the moment so if you're wondering how i'm getting this lighting then i will show you my asset library so here we go afterglow version 2 asset library it's available on gumroad and superhive i had dragged in the studio environment 7 which i already had active so i don't need to bring it back in but i can swap it out for other studio environments as well 
all of which have different kind of behaviors in terms of like ceiling, floor, wall lights, etc. And this is using the Cycles rendering engine. So all of the lighting is kind of diegetic. This is a studio cage now, which is slightly different from the environments because it's more kind of centrally focused with like floating light objects, but they're also super useful. So here's number eight with a kind of dark light catcher behind and, you know, you can change all the parameters and values, move the lights around, etc. These are generally more like performance optimized when compared to the full studio environments. Okay, but going back to number seven, another thing that's useful about these statue objects is, yes, they look good with the original textures on them. If the textures are removed, they are very flat, but that also gives you like a good opportunity, a good baseline to test other materials. So say, for example, in my modular metals product, again, also available on Gumroad and Blender Market, I'm seeing duplicates of the materials here because it looks like the asset library file I'm pointing to has multiple versions flagged. But if I take maybe the, let's try complex iron, I'll try the third one. And if I scrub down the age level, it looks a bit weird with the denoising. We simulate iron going from like pure iron to accumulating rust over time with the sage value. Obviously you want to play with the scale and like the input coordinates as well. Likewise, you've got like complex copper does the same kind of thing. We go from regular copper to over time accumulating like the verdigris effect. This was actually used in a fern video recently. At least I believe it was a fern one. Mel showed me like a door handle rusting. But basically complex statue shapes are like interesting test cases for procedural materials and stuff. I do specifically have a material in the modular metals pack called iron statue. And it's kind of like a good visualization material for objects like this. As you can see, there's kind of like these darkish highlights there that help to show off the curvature. Let me try changing the resolution of the camera quickly. This one, let's rotate that a bit more. I'm going to reset it back to its original material, maybe darken the background a bit. I'm going to crop off the bottom slightly, maybe change the lighting. So I've got a single strip, which should highlight the background as well. So we've got the light catcher background semi-metallic now with the light kind of projecting down on it with the squares. Maybe I will reduce the focal length a bit just to get a bit of the extra environment in. Yeah, something like that. Absolutely my style. From here, we could do some kind of extra elements of like highlight lights going around. I quite like that. It's a shame that on social media, vertical aspect ratios are not really preferred for images, but you know, it could be fine for a short. Hello, editing Kurt from the future. What I've done is I've created a new section on the members lounge for patrons called development zone. And this is basically where resources which are growing or longer term resources, which are larger that I call axial projects will be placed. But you can learn a bit more about that by watching the introductory video here for the development zone. But the simple way to think about it is this is the place where projects will go to grow or have their fate decided or be used for offshoot other projects. So if you're on the silver tier of Patreon, just click on that link and you'll be taken to the post where you can download the zip files and I've done them in a blend and a raw source version but in the blend version it has the cleaned up version of the scan and it's also marked as an asset as well so you can just drag it straight into your scenes so as I find more statues and add them they'll be added to this post so yeah put some kind of like person or historic emoji in the comments if you made it this far and I will see you next time